So what is PaaS Server? To build a web or mobile application, we need a backend, a server, a way to persist and share data across users, devices, and apps. To persist data, we need a database. Without one, if the app is closed and reopened, then you lose where you were. A database is something that remembers information and lets you ask it questions about that information at a later date. But then from the client application, we need a way to interact with this database. Now, typically we don't make direct calls to the database from the client application. It's just not secure or performant to solve this problem in that way. You'd have to put the login and password details directly in the code for your client application, which makes it a target for hacking. So instead we make the client application interact with the database via a server-side framework and specifically via an API, an application programming interface. One such server-side framework is Node. Node is just JavaScript code that runs without needing a browser. So you can just run JavaScript from a command line on a computer somewhere. And with Node, you can write very, very low level APIs. But there are a number of higher level frameworks which makes it quicker and easier for developers to write these sorts of APIs. One very popular one is ExpressJS. So Express helps a lot when writing APIs, especially when compared to the raw Node code. It makes it much easier to write code that is executed when the client calls a particular URL. But PaaS Server is another framework, what's called a backend as a service that sits on top of Express. Just like ExpressJS has a number of features on top of Node, making it an easier framework to write APIs with, PaaS Server has a number of features on top of Express, making it an easier framework to build a fully featured backend for your application. So where did PaaS come from? So PaaS began in 2011. It was a private company, a startup, and the code was closed. You had to pay for PaaS. It was a service you paid for. And then in 2013, Facebook bought PaaS for about 80 million US dollars. They continue to invest in the product, making it more and more robust, as well as adding features to the platform. But then in 2016, Facebook decided to close down the platform. They just decided that over time, it wasn't really close enough to the company's core product anymore. Facebook really makes all of their money from advertising these days. But in a really pleasant surprise, instead of just closing it down, they painfully went through the process of open sourcing the entire platform. So now the open source community, that's you, have access to a fully featured backend as a service product with millions upon millions of dollars worth of investment for free. So now you can have complete control of your infrastructure, your code, and your data.